challenge everyone. It is so hot. Now my outside thermometer that I have in the back says 100, but and that's kind of in the shade. But it's it's hot. It's hotter. It feels hotter than it is even. Can I turn the brightness down? Is it really bright for you guys? Oh, do I need to clean the? Hang on. Let me. I'm cleaning you guys. Oh, you sent me silicone rice mats? Thank you so much, Rachel. We really appreciate that. Yeah, it's really bright out today, Mary. Sorry. This pain. Thank you, Anna. We always really appreciate you. I'm not going anywhere. Let me just try to fix the camera. There we go. Saskia will be right back. She literally just needed to go get some water. She had me start because she uh, she needed to get off her feet for a second, get inside of the cooler air and, and get some water in her. She was doing health checks all morning. What's up with you? Why are you going to the vet? You have a stinky nose? No.
I just had to go down the lip. Yeah, you gotta. I knew it. I smelled it. Let me get it. Let me be your floss. Let me be your floss. Let me be your floss. I know. I know. Stop stressing about it. <laughs> oh, there's one more piece. There's one more piece. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Why are you so upset? Don't look at me like that. Look at his face. Look at this little struggling face. Oh, he's gonna bite me. Oh, he's gonna bite me. You know that? 
Did you know that? Did you know you did that for nothing? <laughs> pick with you? Yeah. Okay, let me grab him one sec. taken to, I have a wooden cage and I never, my cousin works with like woodwork and stuff and he said he would help me um, put in the, the plexiglass front that I was going to put on my wood cage. It's been like three years now. <laughs> Earth built hers after mine and she finished hers way before mine will ever be finished. Um, and so I have the CNC grids in the front of it and it's not like attached to anything, it's just like standing as like a front cover kind of thing. And the three of them, if they stand too close together, all on top of it, they'll topple it. <laughs> so she had to have enough that she started toppling it over. So I have to run and catch it with my foot when I'm when they're when they're waiting for food and when they're begging. I don't know about any interesting places yet today. I'm sure they haven't set. Jared, they're okay. They're doing good. My boys are good. They're doing fine. It's nice and cooler, and it's much cooler even than it, uh, than it is out here in the uh, Yeah, 
I know, I just put that one there um, because you can need the space. Why is this pig in the heat? Can we grab this pig? Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Boyfriend's here, Gabe. <laughs> He's like, great, good for you. <laughs> he walks away. <laughs> Sorry. Do you have any oh. treats over here? Any what? Treats. So it'll stop eating my shirt. No, 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 no. But the fridge is full of treats. Okay, I know. I wondered. I, I should have gotten some, but yeah. I didn't. Uh, is anyone waiting there with a guinea pig in their hands? No. Okay, good. Is everybody getting checked in? Yeah? You haven't been checked in yet? Four. Sorry, guys. Hold on one sec. It's only me here right now. Yeah. Okay. 
extraordinarily busy. So yeah, and I'm only here. I have no movie other than Valerie. I have no assistants here. frustrated sometimes when we're so busy and I know I'm like always nice and but sometimes I'm like oh my goodness stop <laughs> let's all just regroup for a minute Swamp Peter's going. Oh, you know what? On Thursday, we had no power at all. They were fixing the line. And I'm like, why on earth would they do that in a place like this in the middle of summer where 
a lot of people have a lot of animals that depend on like swamp coolers and air conditionings and stuff like that. And uh, obviously it needed to get done. So we had to buy more generators as a backup in case the generator failed. And it was just, ugh. I mean, everything ran the way it's supposed to. The, the, the guinea pigs didn't notice any different other than the horrible noise. But there was like no, nowhere anywhere for us to get cool. And it was like a hundred and I don't know, a hundred and a lot. You missed it. You were, you were smart. You stayed home, Valerie. Yeah. That day when the uh, the power was the out. The power was out. I know. I was trying to think. Okay, so yeah, I can't do baths. Um, we can't do laundry. You can't really wash dishes. There's so many things you can't well, do without too. power. Well, no, you don't realize until I don't. You know, I didn't have power on my electricity. Do uh, how do we have that little piece of water with cash? Pay what? Uh, piece of water. Oh, yeah, cash. Or, you know, if they have a the car and they it, don't have cash, put it in as a they donation. Can just, the water, just give it to people. It's so hot. I don't, I don't care. I mean, let me bring you some cash. Um, I, can, uh, I know there's, there's a pack still. Just go, go around it. I'll spread the people. Yeah, I, I can refill it with more, more water bottles, too. Okay, but you know what? Just if you hand them out to people. Yeah. yeah, they don't need to pay. I, I, it's okay. I'm more concerned with people being safe. And um, okay, so now, is your piggy? Check what? But it's probably been there a while already. Yeah, because it's not something you probably would easily find it. Oh no, would easily find. So you know what? The doctor is here. I can show it to her and see if she thinks that she might be able to remove it on a local anesthetic rather than a full surgery. Would you like me to ask her? Oh, you have an appointment with her. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, let me go bring your piggy there, and then I'm gonna explain to her what what's going on with that. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's so so loud. You guys can watch uh, Valerie for a bit. I'm gonna. She has indeed a lump here that we had discovered already, and um, I wanted also why her nails were still so so cut because we only just saw her a few weeks ago. But let me go to bring this piggy to the doctor and explain what I know. And um,
your favorite parts coming out. gentleman had a bunch of questions about his figgy and that lump and um, and the doctor showed to the doctor and the doctor said and the doctor said no more guinea pigs <laughs> coming on the back <laughs> um, she's gonna aspirate it and see what it is it feels like a little bit of a tumor not so much a fatty tumor like a not a good tumor um, so I'd actually refer them to, to come here and see if the doctor can take a look at it and aspirate. And you know what's crazy? You can send that stuff to the, to the lab. Just, uh, you know, uh, a few cells of it. And the lab can tell you what kind of cancer it is. But not only that, if it is an aggressive, fast-growing cancer or not. I'm officially blown. Science. It's amazing. Don't care for it too much. But... <laughs> But uh, yeah, that is really cool stuff. Oh, you can come and share. I like that. This little one, she came. He, he. Um, excuse me. Uh, in a in a uh, in a carrier with a, a frozen water bottle. All right. So. All right, according to Julia, I do it all wrong all the time. Thank and then you so I much, Jessica. Oh, you so much. What did the doctor say? Uh, what did the doctor so say? So we, we have both ears. Uh, did the, you do an x-ray? Yes, they did do x-rays. He has a bulla? Yes, it is bulla, uh, despite everyone's expert opinions uh, up north. And uh, and unfortunately, it's on both sides. Uh, the, the side with his eye is worse than the other side. But Dr. Nen also indicated that she doesn't believe that his... The, the severity of his eye is solely CPS. Uh, she thinks it's probably the conjunctivitis as well, too. Yes. So we've, we've got three rounds of, of meds. He'll be taking twice daily and once daily for the third. Uh, we've got an anti-inflammatory. Let's hope and that that works. And, you know, in the fact, the bulla doesn't, it, it, it lowers their immune system. Yes. So they become, you know, more likely to get secondary infections. So, and so I, I, let I me give you a little piece of paper on the bulla. Excellent, well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And this 2200 thing requires one way, 160, whatever it is now. It's definitely been worth it. It's been worth it. Oh, my goodness. You got to see any pigs over there? What's that? You see any pigs over there? Oh, no. She's seen the other one. Wait, 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 wait. You can't see anyone. You can't see anyone. I'll point her. I'll point her. Oh, and here is the infant. Yeah, there you go. So grab one. Thank you so much again. And then um, they're emailing us everything. Um, I'll, I'll give I'll give Jen and I'll give Jen and Dr. Nen a heads up that, uh, that they can be released to you as well too. The, the uh, photocopies for the thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Chili, my collection of ones. 
on all collection happens. So that was the guinea pig that some of you may have seen on the line that had uh, pus coming out of his eye. His eye. Completely, and it just kept coming and coming and coming out of his eye. I was blown away. So I kind of, the way he was behaving and I think he was deaf and blind and I'm like, you know what, and he's, he's like a perfect candidate for, for to be a bullet pig and um, sure enough, he, he is he, two sides. The other lady also came and told me that both her pigs have calcified bullet that was just, she already has one that has it. And that was just, the third one was just confirmed by Dr. Nen by x-ray. Um, yeah, it really is a thing. It's a big thing. And uh, yeah, gosh, I wish, uh, I wish Dr. Nen would, would like write something about it for a publication. Because uh, no one's going to listen to me. You know, they're not going to listen to me. But for like a peer journalistic medical magazine or something. Um, I think she should. I should talk to her about that because that's when the vets will go, oh, this is interesting, and then they'll believe it, you know, if you, because I have a lot of people that come and they go to their vet and they say, oh, um, you know, what about this? And the vet says, I've never even heard of it. Like, it doesn't exist because they've never heard of it. But then there's also some vets I've heard are, that are interested. So I want to learn a little more. Like, oh wow, that sounds really interesting. So, you know, it's kind of both ways. Which is great, you know, I, I just really want vets to become interested in these little guys and, and uh, you know, like Dr. Nan and just start to do the research and, and um, so they can provide awesome services to their patients. I, I do have some vets that call me, but usually they're from like Sri Lanka and India. They have zero, because not, not only are they not trained on it, but it's not a common pet in those countries, I, I don't think. So they, they often have some questions and I'd be happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, that, that's interesting. So yeah, I, I, I think that um, that a lot of the vets in those countries are watching, you know, learning a lot from YouTube about these little guys. Okay, you have dirty ears and then now and dirty ears no more. So clean now. So clean. song for the boy part. so hot guys you know what we started doing I haven't spit spritz to do yet uh, or did I you know with the alcohol uh -uh. Nah, alcohol cools you off so much so um, I, I just put it all over my head and it really works it just you really feel cool for at least like 10 15 minutes you're like much cooler and then um, on your back or your wrist Really, really nice. Aww. What happens to you? I brought babies. That's my oh, you brought. She's got babies to show you guys. You've been too busy to go around with all Are you these gonna all the show time. these babies here to everyone? 
Okay, sweetheart, you're good. You're all good. Yeah, she's Sometimes when it's like just a ball loose, that, that it's a hematoma, which is so weird. Like, how did they get that just yeah. hanging in the neck? Yeah, just real dark blood came out of it. Yeah, that's right. It's really dark, old, old blood. Well, that's good news. But, but the life missed it. Do we have anything cool Sorry, and life. interesting that the life can watch after this? Um, no. We have a couple sneezes. Well, that, well, you know, do you, have, do you guys want to be here for like a few minutes and, and see Dr. Nan and the team? There's Jen, Hi there's guys. Chanel. What do you say? Ooh, Let me put you here for a minute. And okay, okay. Good girl. Go. Wait, let me see where I can put you for a moment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All in your day's work, huh? <laughs> I'm not abandoning you, okay? But I know they really want to see you. They love you all. So they want to see the doctor and it's going to be fun. And um, see if there's anything fun see to what do. you're up to. Okay. Are we doing these that these ones first? Yes. After you doctor.
This is one of our favorite pigs. <laughs> Look at that pig's face. So cute. It is pretty hot here, but we do have a um, fan. It's like a portable, portable air conditioner. What a floofy face, I know. Such a cute pig. The portable air conditioner really helps. It's awesome. We would be so hot in this tent. And it helps. Keep, it helps keeps all keeps all the pigs cool. You have a question for the two sneezing piggies, okay? Yes, From they are Sally. both perfection. So I think that they're probably either related to scar tissue because they had previous problems with their pets or pigs or allergies. So I'm basically I'm just gonna give her the spiel about allergies. You should go and answer all their questions about Teddy.
exciting. Didn't do anything exciting. What? Okay. And then, sorry, what was your pick? So we'll uh, find something interesting, something exciting. We just missed that. We missed that hematoma that she, that she took care of. And it's weird. That happens to all the females and males sometimes, where it looks, it feels like an abscess, but they're they're a little different. They kind of hang, really hang loose in the in, in all the you know the dewlap, and um, it's just really brown blood that comes out. So it's a hematoma. Hi, Carly. Hi, Brigitte. Sorry, I'm just now looking at everybody. Um, hi, everyone. And uh, yeah, that's really weird. So those hematomas are fascinating because how do they get them? The hematoma would come from like a, you know, a huge bruise or something that then becomes this, this ball of blood and it's just, yeah. Yeah, really odd, but it's the best kind of lump you can have, I suppose, because you just they just gotta drain it. It can actually be drained just with a needle, just suck it out. Which is probably what the doctor did. This one goes to the doctor. Do you know Julian gave out some drinks to people? Hematoma. Go look it up on uh, Google. Probably better to explain it than me. It's a collection that's stock of blood. It's like pooled blood and that's stuck in an area. Um, that's a hematoma. Hello. Hi, sweetheart. Yes, you are going to the doctor because you have really crusty nipples. Yes, you do. I'm wondering if I should clean them or if I should... Okay. okay, no stone. That's good. Oh my goodness, I had a stone earlier today. It was like this big. I couldn't take it out. It was too big. It's that big you need surgery. It's so sad, uh, you know, to fail in that. Because usually it's just such an easy job. Okay. Anything else going on with you? Doctor needs to know. Let me see. So she's getting an ultrasound, and we'll see what's going on with her. Okay.
What time is it? It it's is three nineteen. If you want more chairs, I think there should be some more over there. Go get it. Seriously. Guys, what's going on over here? Let me show you the border area. Some, someone doing baths over there. There's Jolie. There's a, one adoption. And there's the husband. Uh -huh.
we always think it's the first time.
class on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Only during the week. Well, it's because he came from the work, and I just felt that he was being yeah. really kind and understanding. Just say, He's just like, say, okay, I'm so sorry, but we just are so short staffed that we can't. That's the truth.
squeaky pets. Squeaky pets mean flakes? They love. It's like the thing. It's like, it's like chips. It's literally like potatoes. Yeah. 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 Wait, I guess I can't show you anything yet. 
Hi everyone. Did anyone come and help you? to you in a second, okay? Okay. Fridge. 
okay. that you can put it in as well. Or okay. near it, and we will put it in. We'll put it in there. I think yeah. Since everyone's busy. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. So yeah. sweet. Really, that's so sweet. They're waiting for the vet, and it's going to be a while. So they just thought, oh, you know what? We're going to just buy some veggies while we're waiting. And super sweet. Very nice. Okay. Um, we're going to bring you down. Desiree. I dropped it! What are you working on right now? Uh, Something we want to know their wait, what time on the waiting list. Is it two hours or check in? It's for, the, for, the, for the vet? Yeah. They should uh, check in with. Uh, um, They've just been waiting a long time initially, so I want to just take care of them and ask. Them. Yeah, but the best person to ask would be the assistant. The vet. You were going to ask that for them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you know, seems looks like I just did it again. Me and this thing don't like each other. But you will like me, you hear me? <laughs> You're a good piggy, yes you are. Alright. So <laughs> Oh yeah no, I should get fired, man. I'm so terrible at this. Alright, how's this? Oh no. Now the phone just goes all the way to one side. Why are you doing that? It's like top heavy and tight man. There. Ay ay ay. There. Okay, very good. Hi, sweetheart. Say hi, everybody. Can I go say hi? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go say hi to everyone. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm sorry you didn't work out. Not your fault. Let's start with your little nails, you know. Scotty wants to suggest that we do like a fat, you know, who can do the fastest nail clip competition. It's like, because <laughs> I, I can do them pretty fast. No, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. But you know, Scott, always joking. He's got a great sense of humor. Oh, good boy. How's your ears? They're dirty. Yeah, they are. But you guys are back, okay? I'm Good baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This one? This one? Okay, here's the paper. Yeah, let's put it on the carrier. Thank you. Alright. Dirty, dirty. So, when you're cleaning ears and you put the drops in, don't forget to actually also include this part of the ear. It's right, it's not the ear, but it's just that hairless part right before, because look, it gets dirty too. Sometimes a lot more than this. This is actually pretty clean. Usually it gets even more, so I'm always including that. You are very comfy. You're very nice. Yes, you are. Very sweet. What a sweetheart. And then I always use my thumb as a leverage when I'm cleaning. I was just training one of the new volunteers. So I was just going through the whole thing and and I realized it's so important to tell people that those things. Like I'm, I'm using my thumb as a leverage for not all the time, but when I go here, now I'm gonna use my thumb. So that way you're able to get it all out. I'm much better. <clears throat> no, come back. Come back, you sweetie. You were so good. You were so good. And now he's over. And then I really look to make sure that I got all the little corners where it's getting high. 
see, I did not. I have not a big chunk out. And then there is this part here, which is a, is a fold. It's always, oh, and you're peeing on me. Yay, good job. And you're peeing on me. It's dripping down on the floor. Good job, buddy. Let me get you all cleaned up. Alright, yep, got on. Ah, you're all wet there because there was nothing to soak it up. Yeah, there was nothing to soak it up, kiddo. Alright, now, check your teeth already, but it's just, oh, it did not, because, like, question I can't really see the screen or your answer so it's kind of silly to ask you questions <laughs> but I bet it's hot where you are my guess it's hot everywhere The dirt here on the side of his feet. Maybe it's just the color of his skin. Yeah, there's no sign of upper respiratory. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We don't like that. No.
our little boy. Ooh, windy! Not so weird here in Chatsworth. All of a sudden, in the afternoon, the wind comes up. It's like for 20 minutes. We're wind. It's windy. So can we get a little bit of relief? But it's just so odd, right? Okay. So we didn't really have any crazy cases, you know, other than that 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 female guinea pig with that massive stone that I wasn't able to help. But. Um, She's made a follow-up appointment already with one of the doctors that we recommend, one of the surgeons we recommend, and um, she's made an appointment to get it removed. So what needs to happen with that is that they probably can do it in the, you know, your reef, but you can't really cut into that, I, I wouldn't think. So they just use these teeny, teeny, teeny little um, tools where they will break up the stone like bit by bit by bit and then get it to the point where it can be removed so they have they have to be completely under for that about it are my friend from the San Diego rescue and she was like just as desperate as we are going through this exactly the same as we are it's so heartbreaking and the amount of animals that are being returned and the, actually this this video I'm going to release tomorrow it shows me showing you how bad the situation is and the surrender forms that come in um, because it's it's a, it's of a magnitude that you can't even imagine. So I did I did a video on it. Um, okay, let's check your business. Let's check your business. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, that looks like it's really stuck. See when they get it like this. That might conceal this. That's really stuck. So I'm gonna have to soak it really good. Okay, baby boy. Okay, baby boy. Let's soak that. No, 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 it's not helping. There. Good boy. No, 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 you're not helping. Good boy. <laughs> Yeah, you put 
this for a while, didn't you, buddy? Let me show you. Let me take it off so you can see. This is all super hard. because they can have something like that. That's not a normal, in, you know, it's not an infection, but, you know, they get this really hard matter, the dark matter there, and it's not comfortable. You've got to remove it. Okay, good boy. That was not so good, but... I'm sure you feel lots better. Okay, maybe we can do an early baby cam because they're eating right now. That little early today. And I'd like to know the adoption count for today. That would be awesome. Okay. Just make new ones to be safe. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got stuff everywhere. On the Let's just make new ones to be safe. Um, and only do like a scoop. I don't want to make too much, okay? So she's going to make some new ones and then we can start uh, stretch feeding. Thank you. Yeah, you can stretch Oh, she's in the bathroom. Yeah. Awesome. Where do I throw it out? Uh, it's just the trash. You can not the little cool container, obviously. The green yeah, yeah, just the green waste. Okay. Uh, 
in here we have all the, the cookies that we have at the, at, at the recipe right now. They're all in here, okay? That's how many cookies we have. And then when they get enough that, they go into this one, which is 2022. So you can see how many we have adopted out. So that seems like a lot, but um, for it being July, this is not a lot because usually we don't really, we have a hard time fitting them all into this. So we're about this much behind on, on adoptions for the year. Great way of measuring. But yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. So we're going to find his old cart so we know where he came from, what the name was, if he had any, because everything gets put on the cards. If he had any issues, um, then his buddy is going to rename to get a new name. Hi, Susie. What you doing, Mommy? Hey, Suze, are you following your mom? Suze, come here. She loves it here. Oh, bye! <laughs> She's following the doctor. So cute. All right, so let's back on me. Let me see if one faster life now has this is third. Ooh, back to more lives? Oh, do I have any tips on keeping Guiana? You mean Iguana? Because if that's the case, if that's what you meant, I have no idea. Claire brought a, she brought a, um, beard, no, it was the bearded dragon, and it was really big. And um, it was amazing. I'm not really a reptile person, but I thought that was so cool. Keeping your piggy school in the summer, yes. So what you want to do is get some tiles. You can probably get them at, uh, you know, the DIY store. You get tiles, like slate or something of that, of that sort. Is that those are really cool. So you can put those in your, in your cage and you'll see the pigs gravitate toward it and like to lie on them because it's cool. You'll see them like stretched out like taking advantage of the stone that is cool by nature. Um, you want to put frozen water bottles. That is really good too, frozen water bottles. And you can have a few where you just, you know, and have your fridge full with them so you can always change them out. And it helps really well if you have a fan on the cage as well. That really works good. Yeah, and it's, it's really important. And then keep them away from any direct sun because it's just going to make it warmer in their area. Yeah. We try to eat the frozen water bowls. Put them in a sock. Old sock. Just get the smaller bottles. Or like an old t-shirt or something. Just wrap them up real good so they can't really do it. Because yeah, I know. They want to eat the paper around the bottle and then they want to, you know, eat the plastic and they'll make a hole in it and then have your old page is wet. I know. I know all about it. You're welcome. Noodle Poodle. I like that. Noodle Poodle. That's the name I would give to a cat or something. A silly name I would give to that. <laughs> okay, let me see what the baby says. Alright, let's set you up. But the 
the babies are kind of big, but the new little ones, they are not. So we actually have like a second nursery. They are these little monkeys. I got you. I got you, little baby. Okay, back to mommy. There you go. <laughs> okay, let's set you up here for a minute. octopus thing I have to like tame it all right so get with me while I tame it Ooh, that's a good one all right I'm gonna put loads of yummies here I might even go pluck some for them okay I'm my because I haven't plucked his breast yet so I'll be right back in the yard that started growing it is amaranth but these are the young leaves I keep having a harvest quite often because otherwise they do develop these really massive spikes that are no longer you know good to eat so these are the young leaves and they love it for California midsummer <laughs> Thank you. 
it a cucumber. They do.
stuff I gave them, right? Most of it. Where's all the babies? All right. I'm going to show you a group of guinea pigs that came a few days ago. So they are actually also going to be featured on the video that I mentioned that I'm going to show with our surrenders and how bad our situation is. Um, so they just came in. It was a group of 17 guinea pigs. Hey, Rachel! Yes, we did! But you know what? They're not the silicon, so we can use them, but they're not as good as like the silicon ones that we can really, you know, disinfect properly. So, but thank you though, we can definitely put them to use. Very sweet, thank you so much. So, 17 guinea pigs this lady had in her, um, in her house, and they were boys and girls together, and they were all in this one Midwest village. So the lady could not drive. So Desiree and Allison went there, but you can see already with her how skinny she is. And oh, hello, sweetheart. And she's missing hair. You can tell how. You know her coat is not very nice there's a lot of them with completely like missing hair bellies with no hair and these are all the girls that well that one is for sure pregnant so all of these little ones are going to be pregnant most likely um there were no wee little babies which is a little worrying because they were you know breathing look this one has barely any hair see that one yeah. Oh, there she went in here. Let me show you again. Oh, yes, we do have babies. I forgot. We have two little babies. Yes, we do have. That are your babies. Now, that hair loss is easy fix by proper food, vitamin C, and that's it. It is literally malnutrition that causes that. Um, so I don't, that's not like caused by parasite, even though of course when we give them the ivermectin when they come in, uh, like we do with everyone as a kind of a preventative, but um, that is very typical of malnutrition. So, and so we're going to do like the before and the after that everybody loves so much because in no time they're going to look beautiful and they're going to be just gorgeous and shiny coats and, you know, glittering eyes and so it just takes a little while, but um, yeah, but they're in a bad state, you know, with all the boys, and we've got a lot of things, oh wait, I'm not, huh, these cages, and these are here, getting their dinner, we still need to put them away somewhere, these are all the surrenders that we haven't yet uh, sign that's the last what we do on the end of the day is to find them spaces but we obviously put them in here they don't sit here in day in the day that's why we do our surrenders at the end of the day like between 3 and, and 3 30 usually we like our surrenders um, and then we put them in here for temporarily while we um, you know find out and move pigs around and figure out who goes where and yeah and they get a lots of watery vegetables but it's nice you know it's like right now it's 77 in here which is crazy because out there it's like, like 100, 102 or something right Elizabeth oh yeah I know you can hear anything that that helps a lot thank you <laughs> 77 yeah we could turn it down a little bit so whew, I don't even know if I want to go sit at my usual spot today because it's so hot it is so hot but I kind of wanted to show you my garden though if you're interested and show you my my garden and what's growing and what's not growing 
Maybe we'll get to see some of the chick chickens. Whoa. I'm gonna break my neck one of these days here. Yeah, I probably will. I just, just have a prominent premonition. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ooh, chickens are here. Look at you guys. Ooh, chickens. Yeah. Hello. Look at all these chickens. Where's Weed Whacker? Oh, <laughs> uh, the weedy he's not loose. I should have let him go. The out. goose is loose. Hi, baby. Hi, beautiful Want boy. Me to yeah. Dare venture over to the Weed Whacker territory? Sure. So, this is what I was feeding earlier is this stuff. So you see, I just, what the, you know. What the, no, that's the, um, oh yeah, I remember, I wanted to show you something. Last time I did this, everyone was screaming because I had nightshade in my yard. Oh my God, it's, it's like, like nightshade, you're gonna, you're gonna die. It's this stuff. This is indeed black nightshade. And I decided to leave it growing. And why did I do that? They can only, uh, the, this, you know, the, the leaves of the full grown plants are not, um, are not edible. However, however, let's go find, let's go find, I think I just did a whole thing yesterday. I took them all off. They have berries. And the goose is loose. The goose is loose. It's gonna start biting my butt soon. What the nightshade? Yeah, I'm showing the nightshade and the berries. But I can't. You've been you've been stealing all the red nope. berries, oh, haven't you? Right oh yes, look at that. See They're these? Yummy. these? I did steal are several though. Red I've been berries. eating Louise's grapes. So this one is a black nightshade berry, and I'm gonna show you how poisonous it is. Uh oh, uh oh, she crazy. Oh, she's insane. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mm, it tastes so good. It is. It, it, it starts bitter and then it gets sweet. It's really interesting. So, pretty cool, huh? No, I think so too. So, nobody knows this. This is the most misunderstood plant. Well, so potatoes you... are a nightshade. Well, you know that? They're part of the nightshade family. Well, you don't eat the leaves of potato. Exactly. Right. So it's, it's like the, the fruit or the, the root of it is usually fine, is it not? Yep. I feel like. And people always just think nightshade is poison. But it's the belladonna something nightshade. That's a different species. So they look different. The berries look different. Those are definitely not good. They're poisonous. But these, oh, oh look. look I found that. another one too. I found one. Oh, I'll close right on my mouth. Oh, I found another one. They're so good. <laughs> I want to keep one of them to give them to the pigs, but you know, they, I don't make it over there. I tell so I oh, wow, I found the whole prices. bunch. Look at that. Mmm, oh, yum, 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 yum. Green beans. Yeah, I don't know. It's big. just so hot. I don't think they're throwing beans right now. These are my beans, green beans, colored. In fact, let me just get some of this guy's colored. Come here, buddy. You're a little heavy. A little heavy. And you gotta kind of, the more you You take the more they make. It rhymes. It's going to be a nice big plant. I'm very happy about that. Okay. I think I've got enough. Look, look at how much food that is. Just one plant. This is like dinner for like, what, four guinea pigs. It's crazy, right? Um, and look at this one. This, all this is a kale plant. This is a kale and it wasn't growing it started to do really badly here's another one and I couldn't figure out why you see all this new growth here then I saw what happened is that the squirrels were coming in and they were sitting on the top 
eating the nice juicy fresh leaves so that wasn't good we kind of scared them away <laughs> and it's the same with that you want to also often yeah, you can still see it here see how they've gone to town on that and you want to kind of eat it yourself or so yeah if you have a yard or you can even do this in a pot at home you need not buy that much you need not spend that much money on on guinea pig stuff you know because it's all i'm sorry hold on i'm gonna change the view yeah so yeah you don't need to spend that much money because you can grow so much and then of course there's the grass that's everywhere and it's free so and you can eat it yourself you can save a ton on produce as well i've got some tomatoes i didn't show you but they're growing all right let, let me see with my haul i'm sorry are you feeding did i mess you up i did i just want to show my haul okay hold on <laughs> Just a second. Oh no, nope. look, look. Okay. Look at that. Woohoo! And the collard kind of pretty much kind of grows all year. You can always kind of get some food off it. And there's other things that grow all year round. So who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get some? Okay, you guys see me more green vegetables green leafy greens and I'm definitely giving a lot to my new girlfriends over here we still need to do the floor guys don't judge us the new girlfriends come on are you eating greens come and eat your greens because that's what's gonna make you better The good girls. They love it. Perfect. Hi, Padraig. How are you doing? How's your life with your new friend? Hi, sweetheart. You're so sweet. Yes, you are. You wait, you want a cookie, huh? Ow! Dude. You want a cookie. <laughs> Pudgy. Buddy poo. Little boy. Want me to go get you a cookie? All right, let's get him a cookie. Let's get them a cookie. Yeah. They, they already know. They're so smart. Like, this guy knows. She's coming. I'm going to get a cookie. Pudgy, come and get it. Hey, I gave you one. Run. No, here's yours. Silly. Where is yours? No, not my finger. He doesn't like it. All right, what about, I got something else in here. This is like a Sherwood pill of some sort. Nope, you don't want that either. Okay, sorry. Um, I will just get him some of the greens. I will get him some of our greens. And then Hippo is here with his friend, but his friend is not doing good. Hippy! His buddy is going to be seen by Dr. Nan in a bit. And here's the Hippo. Hi, Hippy. You're eating. That's good. Let me get you guys some of this. And my boys, they are actually very spoiled and usually not all that keen on the green. boys we're okay hippo I call him hippie pip which I don't know I always come up with these crazy names for these animals they have an they have an official name and then the name that I give them like there was a guinea pig here that his name was I don't know what it was but I kept calling him brownie so to me that's brownie so then when he comes, he comes in for health checks. His name is Brownie. <laughs> I'm just always laugh. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. Look, here's him on my babies too. 
Here's the mama and the babies. Okay. This would actually be a much nicer cam. Let me set you up, see if I can set you up here. Because her babies are much smaller and This is much more fun, I think. Ooh, yeah. All right, what is this? This is empty. Something must have been in there. Here's your pellets. Looks like the stage. There's the curtain. Yeah. Where's the actors? There this they are. Is the actors. There they are. The the actors. There's the TV. This is their little hidey away, get away kind of. Come on, little ones. Come and eat it. If I leave, they're going to eat. Watch.
goodness. These little heads popping now eating. <laughs> That's so adorable. Oh, too cute.
Okay, here comes the curtain. I'm just gonna leave it open for a little bit so we can see you better. Hi everyone. So I just spoke to the doctor. We had a cyst on a on a, one of our boys that we keep forgetting or the doctor doesn't have time or she needs to run off to an emergency and then it's always you know our piggies that don't get done it's not an emergency obviously it's, it's a cyst um so today again she can't do it so we're gonna do it for sure on next week so we've got a nice cyst to watch next week and we have a sick piggy here he's really not doing well so she has two more patients she's working on and then she's gonna see Lucky, who, and then we're gonna decide what's going on with him and what the best course of action is. So, and everyone is really upset, and the girls are really upset because they all love him. Is that Gustav? It's the little cowboy over here. Ah, that's the, Gustav's brother. He kept coming to get attention. Here, you wanna so show I... him? Come, you gotta come here because this is set up for this cage. Look. This looks, this is like Gustav's brother. Just put me down. A little low, like here. Yeah. See that? It's Gustav's brother. Thank you. <laughs> Zap is here. Zap's good. I'll show Zap in a little bit. And it's loading for morning. Lucky is not walking right. His back legs are giving in. He's a very old man. He's eating though, but he's just breathing hard. And it's, it's not good. It's not good. And I, I think he's a little older than what's, what, what, what the paperwork, the, what you know, the initial intake that we did. No, this is ours. Our lucky. Yeah, our little babies are running around. Hi, mommy. So, what is her story again? So, they were born here to this mommy who came from the shelter the Carson's shelter on June 13 pregnant and these are her little monkeys and they were born on June 29th so they're like mm, two weeks old so next week and next week next Saturday they'll be available for adoption so well yeah. Says so here they were born on June 29th. Yeah, they're more than three weeks old. They're more than three weeks old, but they're really small. It says here they were born on June 29th. That is two weeks. That's two weeks ago. You're thinking of another pig. So I know. We we have no longer one nursery. We have multiples now. And that's what's going on. She was confused. That happens to me all the time too. Hi Tanya. Uh, gender ratio. I haven't looked, you know. I usually don't even look until they're three weeks old. They'll be three weeks on the twentieth. On the twentieth, okay. So I can just grab one and we can have a, all of us can have a peek. Come here, little baby boo. Okay, let's have a look, see, what are you? I don't have my glasses on. I'm declined to say this is a, is a boy? It's really tough. Like, I, have my, I don't have my glasses on. Anyway, but that's what it looks like. I'm feeling a little, little bit here. I'm saying, I think this is a little dude. I think who's your little dude? Yeah, a very pretty one. The very pretty one. What about you? You're the biggest. You're the biggest. Let me see you, little pretty girl. Girl? may be a little dude I feel a little something here too but again I don't wear have my glasses on so it could be totally wrong guys but at least you got to see what it looked like <laughs> even though I can't tell you what it is gonna get my glasses it's what happens when you get old you know you 
you're gonna need glasses to read. Babies. They're so cute. Of course Satsuki is not old. Who's saying that? Saskia needs to learn not to put herself down.
Okay, so the doctor, we took Lucky. The doctor took a look at him and feels that it is a neurological issue that he has, that, that there's not much that we can do to fix. Um, he's just gonna start declining more and more, and that, that was my fear. And um, so, yeah, we've come to the conclusion that we need to let him go today, which is heartbreaking. But it's the kindest thing that we can do for him right now. Yep. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, it's really tough. And all the girls are very, very, very attached to him. So they are all gonna... Oh my gosh, I don't wanna... I don't wanna know. They're all gonna be so sick about this. So I didn't what kind of one you bring it over when we were doing it because it's not fun to watch. You know, it's not fun to see all that. I, I guess that's reality of it. But I, I made a conscious decision not to because I know how all the girls are so emotionally involved with, with this animal, particularly. Fought really hard. We all have fought really hard to, to you know, make him better. So I just thought it's a private moment that they can share. So let me go check up on them and uh, you guys enjoy this, okay?
back, guys. I'm sorry for leaving you alone for this long. Normally we don't do that. But I had to heal. Another lucky situation. The sadness. Oh, good lord. Yep, it's another blue California day. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh boy, it's actually kind of in the shade. It's doable. So, I'm going to sit in my own place. My nice background there. And we're going to answer your questions. And say hi to everyone, because I haven't properly said hi to everybody yet. Even though most people are probably gone by now. But this is the fun part. Hey Ron. Hi Noodle Poodle, I like that name. Guinea Cat, hi guys. Hi everyone. That's, uh, oh, that was the post office. It was a horse trailer, sound like a horse trailer. We have a lot of horse trailers go up and down here. There's a ranch down the road. They they have uh, uh, they have racehorses, so they kind of oh. They don't have a track to train them on, so I guess they keep them at the at the track. But they um, sometimes bring them back, or if they need rehabbing or something. If everyone asks me, that, I believe it's Azalea. I believe it's Azalea. What are my thoughts on spaying guinea pigs with ovarian issues in females? I am all for it. I'm all for it. We just did one on our own guinea pigs. Because um, often it's more than just ovarian cysts. It can be, it can go a lot further than that. So they can have a cancer, they can have a tumor, there's a growth. Um, that all of the, those are also, they have the same symptoms. So like the, the, the crusty nipples and that kind of stuff. Um, so only, the only way to really get rid of all of it is just you take all of it out. Yeah. But then, why do they get it? Is the big question. Why do they all get it? And it's just like so many females that have it and that get it. Um, Dr. Nan, half the time, is spend, she's, she's doing um, ultrasounds on older ladies um, that have like really crusty nipples and all these problems. And so, that's the real question. It's like, why do they? Is it, are they so prone to get it? You know, and spaying is risky. But if you have a guinea pig that has really severe issues, and she's still at an age and a body condition where she can go through a surgery, and if you have a good surgeon, then I'm all for it, because you might just add another two years to to the life of your pig that otherwise she wouldn't have. Yeah. So I do believe that that would be a good option. There's a lot of people, no, not a lot, but there's some people that believe that, you know, like the rabbit people, they, sorry, I'm, I'm playing with my hair because I'm looking at it, it looks really weird. I'm like, I didn't put my outfit together very well today. <laughs> Seriously, it just is bothering me. I didn't have a lot of time, it was late this morning. Anyway, okay. Um, with, with female bunnies, what they do is they all spay them because they apparently are prone to get the same thing later in life. Um, so they spay them as a preventative. And that is something that I believe Portland Rescue does as well, the guinea pig rescue. They spay all their females, um, which is great if you have a doctor that works with you, that um, Oh, thank you, Brigitte. That doesn't charge you an arm and a leg because spay surgeries are very expensive. We just had one done by one of our doctors that we recommend. I believe the bill was almost $1,100. So, it's not something we can afford to do for every single one of our females. Just So, they must have a doctor that works with them that, you know, maybe sits on the board and that, you know, is 
lends a help a helping hand or maybe even provides free services I'm not sure but that's probably the only way you could do that um, so yeah you know I, I I'm personally thinking it's got a lot to do with the with the food and the soy in the food because most food guinea pig food um, especially the more well, I'm gonna say the more cheaper stuff but that's not quite true either um, it's loaded with soy and and it's all like genetically modified soy soy so it's not like I would um, plant a soy bean bush in my backyard and I can eat the soybeans it's, it's a little different they use the genetically modified soy and then they highly process it uh, and, and it goes in everything absolutely everything and they use it in the pellets as a um, as a filler so the fillers that they use and you guys who watch every week you you already know because oh gosh you're addicted to the Etsy shop I know it is your crystal collection is growing thank you so much for your support that's so sweet I know I always try to be a good curator and find really nice lovely interesting pieces but anyway where was I the soy the filler so that's the corn even though we do feed corn every now and then but it's like you know not quite a, a natural food for them then there is the soy and then there is the wheat so I mean those are all foods that they really shouldn't have and the amount of soy soy is usually the most prevalent ingredient in the pellet so they eat a lot of pellets so the amount of soy that goes into that little body of genetically modified and processed soy is an enormous amount and that cannot be healthy ah oh, crystals I that they are beautiful I know they're just when I gaze into a crystal I really feel like it's the universe in there that's why I called the store the universe reflected because it's it's just that's how I feel it's, they're so beautiful um, but yeah that's what I think and you know yeah exactly soy is a natural estrogen and they're giving so much of it they're eating so so much of it I actually wanted to do a study where and I discussed this with Dr. Nanaker I said how many would I need to you know she said well probably two groups of 20 at least where we have them from a certain age and we feed one the pellets high in soy and the other group are getting like the piggy's choice pellets for instance or another pellet that doesn't have any fillers and then you know just wait and see and also see we can also measure um, calcium stones at that point as well if the group that eats the, the crappy food <laughs> um, is more prone to get calcium a, a kidney stone uh, sorry bladder stones um, so there's a few things that we could measure at that point and um, I just we just don't have a space to do it at this moment but I would love to because you all know how I love to do research and, um, and learn more stuff and find things that, that nobody knew it's like because I actually do so much of the research and I read all the the lab reports where they do you know all these tests of course they use guinea pigs but then you know how would have this vaccine affected this or whatever and there's so much of it but nobody really wants to read it's a boring read but um, I just go digging through these things these, these these medical you know documented journals and and uh, yeah and, and and I'm like find stuff and I learn stuff and then and I can put it together and then I'm like whoa wait a second maybe you know that kind of thing so but yeah I, I literally I, I just, just live for that I, I get lost in the research so right yeah then the GMO stuff so um, I, I once mentioned it on a video and then I I saw a comment that said you know I thought Saskia was really cool until she mentioned the whole stupid GMO thing and so now I don't believe anything she says anymore 
I'm like, okay. GMO it stands for genetically modified organism, which means that it's I call it Franken Franken food, freaking food, because they have taken the DNA of the actual food item and messed with it. You know, the DNA is like, and they're making weird hybrid foods. Um, yeah, I don't want to eat that. So, and that's what genetically modified means. They have altered the genes of the food. And then they can actually patent it. That also blows my mind. So, and you know, whoever controls the food supply is the big person in the world. Um, oh, good luck. You're bathing your piggies tomorrow. You nervous? Nothing to be nervous about. Hey, Brigitte, I just had a quick break inside and I was watching your video when you were bathing your guinea pigs. Oh, she means the subject about whether or not to bathe guinea pigs. And Monsanto is an evil corporation. I have, I agree with you. So, yeah, so that's the deal with GMOs. And uh, guinea pig food is full of it, chock a full of it, unless you get an organic food then you know there will not be any GMOs. Um, so Piggy's Choice is, is, is an organic food and um, Oxbow has one. I think there are some UK brands that are also really, really good, but not available here. So no grain, no, um, you know, what is it? So, uh, no fillers, I mean, really that's what you need you just need the, the grass the different grass haze um, but it's it's all about the mighty dollar because the more fillers you have in a pellet the less of the actual stuff you have to put in it in order to you know sell it and it's just pure greed it's not about you know you see some of these foods it's like veterinarian approved or veterinarian uh, uh, recommended it's like really how can a veterinarian recommend this stuff it's just uh, if i were on a diet like that I'd, I'd probably get sick too you know so there's that and so yes i do believe that that has a lot to do with it but yeah if your piggy shows it and shows that she has problems with her reproductive system then I would definitely I would definitely consider doing it and that brings me back to insurance once your guinea pig hits three that's usually when things are starting to get wrong right for like a baby you, you're usually okay until about two and a half or three so that's when things can start going wrong so if you don't want to spend the money early you, maybe do it later you know because chances are you're gonna need to go to a vet are kind of high at that point you know and if you have the insurance you will have that peace of mind that you know that if I have like a huge surgery that I need to do um, like a stone surgery or like you know a space surgery because of medical issues because they don't just do they don't cover just a space surgery they would um, so yeah that is something to consider you know when your piggy gets to a certain age because once they've been diagnosed with something it, then it's a pre-existing pre condition and then there's no way that you are going to be able to get that insured so and nationwide yeah it's not that cheap though I think it's 200 or 250 for the whole year per guinea pig with a discount from multiples and then I think the total deductible for the whole year is 200 bucks so it's not that crazy if you think about it yeah because you hear from a lot of people say no I got we did we get the um, insurance and, and the pig had like a huge thing happen and they paid like every penny I'm like wow that's that sounds really good um, but then they will also you know most of these places will have in mind they they will have they, they put that in there that they will only pay out 
so much on a specific issue. So if there is something, sorry, this thing is bothering me because it's just moving so much. Um, so if you have an issue that is constantly recurring and they need another surgery, another surgery, then, oh, you can hear me over the wind? Oh my goodness, it's not even that windy. Um, then, they will have a limit, for instance, you know, cancer, there's a limit of, I don't know, maybe 10,000 or something like that. So you always got to look at your policy to really understand it. And that's the worst thing that, ugh, because I'm so bad with that, all that paperwork stuff <laughs> and reading that. I just don't have the energy for it. I don't have the patience for it, is think of what it is. Yeah, of course, DNA changes through breeding because the babies have different DNA than the parents. Yeah. But yeah, you know, they're doing a lot of that stuff. It's just so much going on that it's just not okay with messing with nature as beautiful and as perfect as it is already, you know, and to mess with that, I don't know. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Please, can you can you um, put the pellet? Can you sell the pellet? And oh my gosh, it's just really expensive to ship it. I don't know who's gonna want to buy a pellet that costs just as much, about as much to ship when you can get a bag of food for twenty bucks at Amazon with free shipping included. You know. Um, so I've been thinking about it and I'm still thinking about it. Shall I do it? Shall I not do it? You know, um, but it would also add more work on our end because we're already so busy and we have quite a bit of people on staff to make sure everything runs well. And then we'd have to add probably another person to do the packing of the, of the pellets. Um, so yeah, the pellets are, we buy them in bulk and the recipe is you know to my specification so we just buy in bulk and then we have it here to feed and then we sell to the people that come here to adopt or they just come by for their supplies but no never really thought if i could um you know to sell it to sell it sell it i guess i'd have to make it whole you know it's a, i probably should I would have to design like a bag and then have to go and make the bag and then tell the oh I'm sorry you guys are floating all over the place because this this head thing is just not maybe if I hold it like this it's better um, then the mill where they're made would need to you know use their personnel to put it in the bags I suppose um, yeah let me see a question Pellets serve. Hi, a couple days ago I got the only pellet back for my guinea pigs, and it was called Foraging Diet. And there are seeds. We heard they can't eat seeds. They can eat seeds. They can eat seeds. Um, I don't know where that comes from. I think it was about choking. There's a choking hazard in seeds, which. Um, Honestly, there is no choking hazard because the, those those little molars they will jump through a soft seed like in no time. So they can have seeds. The thing is that seeds are very high in calories, um, and that is something that we may not want to give them on the regular. So that's that's why. But yeah, they definitely can have them, but they're not necessarily that good for them. In, in, in like a, a lot, they have a lot of it. Your guinea pig passed away, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a combination of bladder stone and dental disease. Oh my goodness, it's just, those are the two worst things. You know, and those kind of repeat themselves. They are never, it's never over when it comes to that. Stones usually come again, teeth overgrowing, that's usually also a thing that keeps happening. Um, I think that guinea pigs with uh, calcified bulla 
are more at risk for developing the teeth issues as well. So I was just discussing that with the doctor and I said, how about, because what causes it? There has to be a cause because the disease, the dental problems and the overgrowth by itself is actually, it's not a thing. It's, it, we call it acquired dental disease. They've acquired it, but through something else. So what is that other something that caused the teeth to overgrow? Guinea pigs will stop eating, for instance, if they're not feeling well, or they have pain or something that can make them stop eat for like a week on time at end or their teeth will overgrow if they're not eating the hay because the hay is super important for that um, and so they can get it that way for instance but with the calcified bola one of the things is like that no blink reflex that they have right which is really a huge symptom and if they have no blink reflex in the eye they're not really blinking when you go all around the eye like this, then you are probably gonna have some problems with the muscles all around, you know, the muscles, the blink muscles don't function. So why shouldn't the jaw muscles not, you know, they probably also not function correctly. So today, there was a guinea pig here, um, and they were concerned that maybe the pig had something going on and you know could I look at her teeth and I did it's just because sometimes we just notice she's just having a bit of a hard time eating so I put my pinky finger in the mouth of the guinea pigs wait it was this one yeah you can see it's chipped yeah so <laughs> I put my finger in the mouth of the guinea pig and this side was great it's like how oh, you can get like oh no that really hurt you know and then the other side I was like that is so weird because that one has hardly any bite. So there is definitely something going on on that side. And that was also the side where the eye wasn't blinking. So, and an x-ray indeed revealed that the guinea pig had a calcified bullet. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, so you probably want, the, exactly probably once a month he will need a teeth trim um, and he the first thing to go is the eating of the hay that's the first thing to go they just can't eat hay when they have problems with the teeth they can't eat them it's too fibrous too hard to you know chew up so that's the first thing to go exacerbating the problem already you know so and it makes total sense that, it, that the bullet picks are just so prone to get it. So now I'm thinking every pig from here on that I get in that has teeth issues, I'm going to x-ray and just see what percentage of those teeth picks actually get it from you know, or have the calcified bullet syndrome. So that would be interesting to see, right? Yeah, if they can, he can't physically do it. So it doesn't matter what you give him. It's not about the flavor. He can't physically eat it. So all the pigs that have a, an ongoing issue, like yours, that needs, you know, you know, you need to go get it trimmed again because it does grow back. They, they'll never eat hay again. You think your pig is deaf? Yeah, that's also quite common deaf piggies you can try it out too with you know a plastic bag if she responds to it then you know she's not deaf but if she doesn't then you definitely know and yeah that that is another symptom of CBD a uh, CBD <laughs> I'm so used to saying CBD calcified bullet syndrome sorry Yeah, they, they respond to so much, like the thing on a glass, of a glass. Uh, it would happen when I would drop like a ball and drop it on the floor in there and you could hear them go brr, 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 all over because they do that when they hear a sharp noise, they make this brr sound. It's hysterical. So, um, 
when I drop it, they'll freak out, but then they hear like at least like five or six of them like going <laughs> And there you go, they're super sensitive to really loud noises. Oleanders, yes, that's right. Oleander, not Azalea, Oleander. And that that's uh, poisonous apparently. Someone pointed it out to me to me. That this is poisonous. So, so, which one of you follow the Masons and Masons Cadies? Maybe even some of you never even heard of Masons Cadies. <clears throat> hey, Dave. Yeah, they are. Um, they have a huge Facebook page and they just have their uh, personal guinea pigs. Awesome. So I was talking to Sophie and she suggested that I do a Q&A for her followers. I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, they're, they're, in, they're in England. <coughs> they're all over the internet, but you know, it's like a very much an English thing. All their followers are, ma are mainly English as well. But yeah, that'd be cool. Do a QA. and a And we, I'm like, okay, we're going to have to figure out how I, I can do that. Because I'd somehow have to like log into your account or, you know, add me as an ad. I don't know <laughs> how I can go live on your channel. So we have to figure it out. Mason Scavies? No, no, no. They're in England. They're in the UK. Piggy's ears. I always say, you know, every two months, three months, when you do the nails, just check, just do the whole health check. Like every three months, that's what we always say. Yeah, they have a huge herd, correct. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, kind of few rescues in the UK that don't like them very much and are doing kinds of stuff that is just horrible and there's a lot of drama surrounding that and I feel very bad about that. I'm just glad that we don't have that here at all. You know, it's almost like people are jealous of their success and they're not a rescue. They're just a the couple that shares their love of their guinea pigs, you know. Yeah. And then they turn it into more of a rescue situation rather than a, um, you know, though they don't, they're not officially rescued. They don't really home out. Um, but, um, yeah. So it'll be fun. But if I'm, I'm gonna do it, I will post it everywhere so people will know and can join. But that'd be fun. Yeah. All right, it's still 88 of you. That's awesome. Um, I should actually plan another live Q&A because I haven't done that for a long time. Uh, there was a big brouhaha about how their page was suspended for the use of the bullying word pigs too much. I don't think it was about that. I think it was more than that. I think it was... Um, I think... I think their haters were just sending reports, incorrect stuff to Facebook about their page. And, I think they just put it on hold until they could figure out what on earth is going on or something to that effect. Like something really horrible like that. Yeah, I'm like, you know, they're no different from uh, Little Avengers, the lady who has her guinea pigs and shares them with the world and makes videos. You know, they don't have a YouTube channel, they have a Facebook page. I mean, they're no different. They just don't understand why, you know, 
What's, what's, don't get it. Don't get it. Hi, Tony. Okay, let me see. The stuff from the last live sale that I forgot to sign into. I would still like to get them if I can. Sorry if I messed up. I think that Julia still has it. Yes. So, I, I'm not sure. You know, you can email contact at laguineapigrescue.com. Avery does the email and then she can redirect it or answer you or, you know, just let her know what the problem is and then we'll fix it we good at that we fixing stuff Donald Dodo from Ukraine and his pigs are so cute they've been moving from place to place because of the war oh my goodness I need to look that up I need to look that up yeah it's terrible it's just horrific the barn boys um yeah it's just so loud there right now that it's no fun going there right now because the, the noise unfortunately especially today we had an extra fan set up because it's so extraordinarily hot it, the, the, it's too noisy so maybe if next <clears throat> next week it's a little less I'll be happy to go and we can sit and I can just like go well, go lie down with the pigs and get covered in shavings and and put you all at the same level so you can all be nose to nose with the guys. But you know there's not that many left. We found a lot of homes. So there's we have these two huge groups and <clears throat> some of them are very old, so some of them passed away just from age. And uh, some of them got adopted so but a lot of them are the ones that I left are kind of like they're gonna be with us for a long time because they're not really adoptable yeah a lot of arthritis and, and the broken feet and, yeah uh, Mason Scabies oh no they they're all separate I think they have a big group of females I don't know where they are, um, what the, where the, I don't know, the boys are separated, they're not breeding. Definitely not. Because then I would definitely have a problem with that. <laughs> oh, they neutered the males? Yeah, no, that's great because then you can have them all together. A big happy family. That's usually what you can do then, which is great. Sorry, hold on, this thing is bugging me. Hello. Great, just put it back the way it was. All right, well, whatever. Um, it's great if you, again, if you have a good vet that's going to help you and is not going to charge an arm and a leg for your neuters because those also are not cheap. Um, but I said this a while ago and we still need to find a time to do it, is that Dr. Nan is going to um, do local anesthetic and do a neuter on like the little guy. On, like three month old or so and that should be really easily done under a local and then we can see if that could possibly be done with piggies that are a little bit older because when they're little it's so easy it's just it's little beans it's like you know um, but the bigger the, the bits get the bigger the procedure would be so but if, if that can be done under a local and it's not going to take a lot of time then we could be neutering our pigs just real easy you know but the little guys but that's how we find them uh, 
more easily find them a home. Most people want female guinea pigs. That's the problem. Most people want female female pigs, and um, because they're afraid of you know, the fighting, they read online, and then of course you know the, the pocket needs to be clean. So unfortunately, people just they're like, oh no, they already come here and they say, oh I want to adopt two girls. I'm like, white girls, boys are nice too, and they go, no, no, I don't want to, no. I just need two girls, okay. Uh, so yeah, we can avoid that with neutering the male so we don't have this excess of boys because all rescues have an excess of boys, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't know if you knew that, but that's, that's, that's unfortunately, it's the case, yeah. I know, I love my boys. I don't think I've ever had female guinea pigs. All my pigs have been the boys. And then the fact that I have boys all together now is just super, super bonus for me. And now I'm thinking, huh, maybe Buddha pigs are all calcified. Uh, sorry, Buddha pigs are Bulla pigs. <laughs> Someone mentioned that the other day as well. I think it was Brigitte actually. So yeah, maybe it kind of calms them down. That the, the pigs with the calcified bulla are just a little calmer and their hormones are not raging and they're just not interested so much in that. So, yeah, that's another something to, to uh, research. Yeah, definitely. So let me see where everybody is. If everybody's gone on this, I always feel bad because this is where everybody finishes everything off and I'm just sitting here talking to you guys. I feel bad, but it's my job, isn't it? It's my job. Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Someone's still here. Being a syringe man. Yep. Well, she's been eating it out of the bowl on her own. Oh, so but she doesn't really need to be syringe man. No, she just likes the soft food. She will. She doesn't eat real well on her own. I don't think she feels good. I don't think her her bite strength doesn't feel good. I checked it, and then um, but she's been pretty happily. She's been syringe fed obviously before she she dive bombed it. Volunteers, say hi to everyone. Hi. I'm Amanda. This is Amanda. Your piggy's not eating hay, but eats celery, carrots, hay pellets, and also drinks water fine. I'm worried his teeth may be too long. How should how long should can his teeth be? Well, that's a tough one to say. How long should they be? Um, as long as you know the pig eats well then, you know, you can't force them to eat hay, and hay is definitely a component that will keep those teeth in check, but you can't force them to eat something. Oh, um, Simply Dave says, Amanda, I love the color of your hair. Thank you. And everyone is saying, hi, Amanda, hi, Amanda. I'm in Weakers. <laughs> She's in Weakers. Yay. Um, so yeah, well, how long should they be? I mean, I just don't know how to explain that. That's, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. Um, you can actually get a, 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 a speculum, a nasal speculum, and you can learn how to operate it and look into your guinea pig's mouth so you can see the teeth, the molars then you can see what it normally is supposed to look like and then you can also tell down the line when it doesn't look like that that something may be wrong so that's a good thing get maybe one of those like a, uh, don't get a child's one because they're actually a little too small unless you're getting because of very small mouth I just like to get the regular uh, one and just you know put on your glasses at least I have to 
and just shine a light and look in the mouth and you can see the molars. Yeah, and they should just not be jagged or jagged with sticking out of it. It should just be nice row of you know, nice pretty whites. Oh my goodness. This morning, there was a piggy. I looked at her teeth. She was young. She was like five, six months. And her teeth were brown. Like brown. Her molars. So we could see that the fronts weren't quite white. And that's not never a good sign and I always think it's genetic when they get that color those colored teeth so I always think it's genetic and um, and sure enough probably is because of this pig was so young to have that and and there was just something completely not right so she was eating fine still but I said this is gonna be a special needs piggy you know in about maybe six months time. That was a very young, young little girl, young little girl, very sad. So genetics, yes, there's a lot to do with a lot of things, you know. I mean, listen, I don't know how they breed them, if they're, if they're, you know, good about picking the males and the females to breed, or maybe they just don't care and I'm just, you know, leave the brother in with the mother or, father and the daughters and just inbreed them like crazy you just don't know and then yeah you're gonna expect some problems if that happens so I just I don't know it's, it's such a secretive uh, business that nobody really knows what goes on in there so how do they pick the, the pairs that breed I mean how do they do that are they actually conscientious about making sure there's a diverse gene pool or are they just uh, caring and just putting anyone together, you know, because I, I do believe that the males and the females, probably, you know, probably one male with more females, and that that is just, they're just kept like that until, I guess, she can no longer breed. Um, and that then I don't know what happens then, you know, it's like the fact that I don't know how are they going to what are they gonna do with that guinea pig that's gonna get sent home? Oh, that was the one I'm gonna find. Hold on. There she is. So, this is the video I did. This is a Katrina. She's the one who uh, was gonna be sent back to the the supplier by the pet store because they didn't want to give her treatment and because she had an uh, abscess and she had another abscess underneath that so there's a photo on the thumbnail that shows you when I cleaned it off really good the abscess the scabbing came off because that's what I wanted so I could really kind of see if it was still stuff inside but it was just really a big hole um, and then Dr. Mann said, well, let's put some, uh, give her some antibiotics, and it's completely done. It's all gone. She's all good. So it's like, what, a week? Yeah. So there was an abscess behind it that has disappeared as well. And that, I found, works with these little guys uh, when they have these abscesses in their neck. Not so much with the older ones. The, the antibiotics don't seem to work so well in making it disappear. But when they're young like this, it often will. So I just cleaned out that, that hole that she had there and um, cleaned it, disinfected it real good, and the antibiotics did the rest of the job. So that's it. It was so easy that she was going to get sent back to the to the breeder. So what what do you think they would have done with this guinea pig? There it comes. It comes back. Store number 553 sent back this box with this guinea pig. What do I do, boss? I don't know. I don't know. Think about that. It's all about money, and, and you know, humane euthanasia is done by by a veterinarian, and they, those cost money. So, I just, 
just don't know. That's all I can say about it. Because I don't know. <laughs> but it's a scary thought. I just don't know what would have happened. What happens to these babies that are sick that are sent back? I don't know if they get treatment or if they euthanize you mainly. I just don't know. I'd love to interview someone who owns one of those facilities and how they pick their breeding pairs too. I mean, that's another thing I, that, that, that would be really interesting. be gone by tomorrow but hi my love hi baby it's a good boy yes you give everybody kisses bamba give everybody kisses everybody gets kisses from bamba he's like he wants his cookie that's what he wants i love you <laughs> oh my gosh all right Kelly, sir you're welcome we'll see you next week Hi, Rue. How are you, buddy? Casanova, come and say hi. Say hello. Oh, he's too busy eating his hay. Uh, little baby Rue. Hi, baby Rue. Ah, no biting. I don't have anything. See, they all like, they know I usually have gifts. And they're like, you know, you don't have any gifts for me. I don't know if I want anything to do with you. <laughs> Here, here's a gift. Here's a gift. Yeah, I know you like this. Oh, La Bomba is nib nibbling my hands. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Bomba, you are so cute. I love you guys so much. Yes, I do. You shall watch my baby. He's my baby. I need to take a photo of his little face and he's like that close-up photo is so cute oh and look who's here hi come on this way out of way we can't go through there no go back go back <laughs> go back <laughs> other way hello oh well he doesn't want to oh i think my, my juice is going guys oh my goodness it's totally going juice is going I think it's time to say goodbye because otherwise I'm going to get cut off. Yeah, totally. Juice is leaving, leaving us um, because I did not for the last two hours had plugged in. So, I got to say goodbye. And thank you all. Thank you, my moderators, of course. Thank you so much for helping and being so awesome and, you know, making it all happen. And uh, I got that cool video coming up this week, so make sure you catch it. And it's about the amount of surrender requests that we get, just to give you an idea of what we deal with every single day and how many requests we get in. Um, 
So yeah, that, that'll be a good one. I've never really done anything about that, uh, a video, I mean, so. Um, sorry, I've got a hard time reading because my screen's literally gone dark because I'm so low on the juice.